Howdy folks, welcome to The Daily Coin. My name is Rory and today is Tuesday, October the 17th, 2017. And I have the very distinct honor and great pleasure of welcoming back to the show the uh, owner and proprietor of Wealth Research Group, Mr. Lior Gantz. And you can find all of uh, Lior's uh, great reports and a wealth of knowledge and work that he shares freely at wealthresearchgroup.com. Lior, welcome back to The Daily Coin. Hey, Rory. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm glad that you're here. And I wanted to start with uh, some of what's going on with the economy as we as this whole thing continues to melt down and come apart and some of the cracks are actually being seen at this point, uh, what do you see as some of the uh, biggest dangers to the global economy and your own portfolio? What do you see happening right now? Well, what I think is, is very important at this point, this juncture, is that the Fed is inside of a tightening cycle. They've already done three rate hikes, and if they do a fourth one in December, it will be two years since they started the tightening period. Now, all of the tightening periods that have happened under the, um, the, the debt standard, so the 1971 to 2017 period, each of and every one of them, two years after it started, and at the fourth rate hike, it signaled the start of a recession and the beginning of a stock market correction. So at this point, it's very important to really monitor what is going to happen on December 15th with the rate hike. If they are going to raise rates again, this is a very important sign for institutions and corporations and pension funds to start taking profits on this huge bull market that has been going on for nine years. People have made a lot of money in the first, in the, you know, if, if you got in right after the, uh, the the Great Recession, which is exactly what you should do as a contrarian when everyone else was screaming the world's coming to an end. And right now, it's the opposite. It's Everyone's thinking that the U.S. is over the hurdle. The volatility index is at an all-time low. People are having so much confidence. The PMI, the, the, the producer measurements of, of you know index, it's up every month it's not only in the u.s it's in asia it's in europe it's everywhere there's a resurgence a belief and an optimism that um you know the global economy is over this huge hurdle and with the fact that trump also wants to cut taxes dramatically this is putting all the more fuel inside of this uh bull market and that is truly unique to see that stocks are trading at an all-time high, P ratios are generational highs, and people are just piling in there. This year, we've seen so many new all-time highs. It's been over 10 times that the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the, and the Dow have shattered records. And this coming rate hike could signal the beginning of the end for this. So do watch that. That is a huge change. And what I think is important, Rory, is to understand that for institutions and for large pension funds and, and, and hedge funds, gold is not what we see it as. They are not buying gold um, for, for their portfolios. So they do not store gold like, like individuals. They buy gold as a hedge. But more than gold, they buy gold stocks as a hedge. So if they see that the stock market is going to begin to correct, they're going to take all of these profits and go into this tiny, tiny sector called the gold market. And I think this is the beginning of the end of this cooling off period for gold shares. But, uh, you know, this is something to monitor and not back up the truck on. Um, very important. Do not get aggressive because right now is not the time uh it, it, to become aggressive on gold it's it's time for patience and waiting unless you're very sophisticated and you know how to short uh the basket of of uh of gold stocks while you're going long your quality shares and we talk about this at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash crash which is my blueprint and master plan on how to 
um, you know, anticipate and prepare for, for the coming crash and how to prosper in, in, in the aftermath. But, you know, at least have this on your radar. With regards to dangers, look, um, I, I, my analogy, Rory, is if you take a look at a bike and it has a flat tire and it, you, you, you try to drive it to the left, you try to drive it to the right, it doesn't matter which direction you try to drive it to. The problem is the tire. And that's the problem with America right now. They, the voters think if they choose left, then it will be a right. Then they go right. Then they go left. The problem is in the tire. The problem is in the debt. The debt is the disease that has plugged this country. And unless you deal with that, everything else is not under your control. And all you can do is prosper as a person um, in light of this. So obviously you've seen this year the immense opportunity with blockchain, blockchain technology and with cryptocurrencies, um, Wealth Research Group has, has profiled Bitcoin at 400, Ether at $12.8, it's now over 300. Uh, Monero, which is XMR, I don't know if uh, you know how many listeners are following this, but we covered it at 98 cents, it's now $98, it's a hundredfold return, 10,000%. And lately we, we initiated coverage of high blockchain technology, it was the first pure publicly traded blockchain company. It's already quadrupled in one month. All of our research on it, by the way, is for free at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash must. Um, just a huge opportunity, Rory, if you know what you're doing in light and despite of all of these dangers. Well, you've certainly given us a lot to chew on right there, uh, Lior, and I want to kind of back up just for a second and touch on something that, that you had, one of the points that you had made. And that's, and maybe get a little bit deeper into it. And that's the, uh, the stock market and the relationship with the uh, gold uh, junior miners in particular, because that's where all the money's made as far as gold investments. I mean, physical gold is not an investment. As you said, that's a hedge. And we all know that the, that the stock market is overvalued at this point, the, the uh, equities markets, Dow Jones, S&P 500, Russell 2000, whatever you're looking at, they're all overvalued completely. And like you said, the VIX, VIX is dead. Everybody thinks it's just unicorns and rainbows as far as the eye can see. And how would someone, or what's the relationship, I guess, between getting out of these equities and into something that is unloved right now, like the juniors that will explode, that will go up or have the potential to go a lot higher than where they're at right now. What, what can you give us a little bit better uh, roadmap on that? Sure. Um, so I'm 33 right now, Rodi. When I was 18, um, you know, 15 years ago in 2002, um, I bought my first stock. It was VF Corp. The company is still around. It's a very large retailer of clothing. I still own the shares that I bought back then. It's the you know it's the manufacturer of Wrangler, North Face, Timberland, Kipling, all these amazing uh, brands that that you know and and probably have some products of. And that company used to pay six cents of a dividend. It now pays $0.42 cents dividend quarterly. Wow. That is like a renter who used to pay um, $600 and now pays $4,200 for the same property. And so companies that are profitable and are raising their dividends are the best investment over the long term for a sleep good at night investor. And at Wealth Research Group, we cover some of these. If you go to the website and you click on the top menu under the, the, uh, the button Wealth Stocks, you'll see some of my favorites. That is where I hold most of my wealth because I'm trying to compound it over the decades. Now, some people are not 33. They're 40, 50, 60, 65, and they're looking for different solutions. They want to find vehicles that can quadruple or you know uh, uh, 
make five to six times your money in a few months or in a few short years and not in decades. And they're willing to take the added risk. Gold mining shares are cyclical and they're absolutely risky. But if you can find the top ones, if you can find the ones that you know the owners of or find people who know the owners of them, then you have a real shot. Wealth Research Group is only about um, creating opportunities where we actually know the owners, where we actually sit down with the people who run the companies. And so in 2016, we profiled 12 companies in the gold and silver sector that have gone up either a double or more. And the reason is we know these companies front and back, but they are risky. So just as a, as a caveat, I did create a special report for your listeners regarding all of the different niches in, in the gold sector. It's a wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash gold playbook. It's, a, it's honestly the, the complete gold playbook about junior mining shares. Now, what I think is important to understand is with these companies, if you are looking for the speculative gains, the real big gains, Rory, you need three things. One, you need gold at 52-week highs. Right now, you are looking at gold struggling and testing its support at around 1300, uh, 1280, 1290. If it can hold fort and stay right there and then start moving higher because the sellers will be exhausted, then you will see gold going up into the 1370s and 1400s, and that will fuel institutional speculation. Then you need the stock market to, to stop being the, you know, the, the, the measure of, uh, of last resort. The reason the stock market is doing what it's doing, Rory, is because if you're a hedge fund and you manage billions and you have the chance to buy either Apple or a bond, that the U.S. Treasury is issued. What are you going to do, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I, you know, they 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 rather buy Apple at thirty five right. times earnings. So it was if it was a private company, you it, it will take you thirty five years to uh, to recoup your investment than than uh, lend the U.S. government money for thirty five years, right? That's how right. they think of it. And so once that stops being attractive, because you know rates are going to keep going higher a little bit here. And make the bond to stock, you know, difference a little smaller, then you're going to see them go into these gold shares. And what they do, the the big funds, they don't go into the junior miners, and that's fine because they go after the Barrick and the Rio Tintos and and the Kinross, and they go in there and they start pressuring management. They start telling them raise your dividend, go after new acquisitions. They start to be activists, and when they start doing that. It puts pressure on the management teams to start making acquisitions, and those fuel the junior mining sector. Those revalue all of these little projects that are now worth 10, 20, 30 million and will be worth 300, 500 million when the cycle goes um, you know, ballistic in four to five years. Now, it doesn't make any sense. I know. It doesn't make any sense for a gold project to be worth 40 million today and 400 in two years, but that's the way it is. And the reason is they only become economic and profitable at certain gold prices and when companies have enough cash to pay for them and please their shareholders. It's a snowball effect, and every time it's the same thing. And if you want to benefit from it, you really have to know the exact companies that have the top quality assets at the best jurisdictions with the best management. My experience in the last eight years with junior mining shares has been that 5% of the um, companies have the, the jockeys. You know, they have the warriors. They're the, right. the people that have conviction and they just, they're master negotiators and they know exactly what they're doing. And 95% of them are not that professional and you'll probably end up losing money even if they have a great asset. You'll just, sh you'll just see one of the better management teams take that over and manage it better so you gotta and at wealth research group we actually cover these companies uh on an ongoing basis but uh through our newsletter but i want um, to ask and i'm sorry to interrupt you leor but i want sure. to ask you about 
as far as gold and your timelines that you're that you're uh, offering up, and that Jeff Christian, love him, hate him, doesn't matter to me. Uh, he is one of the main players at the CME group that owns the COMEX. And the COMEX, as we all know, is where some of the manipulation goes on. That's where all the, as far as the gold and silver uh, market is concerned. Now, he has stated on a couple of occasions recently that gold is going much higher and will maintain a much higher level uh, by 2020. And he is he has stated that the annual average high will be north of the average annual high of 2012 that was at 1669. And do you give that any credibility, or does that play into any of what your uh, any of your timelines or what you're looking at at all? I mean, because he stated that. You know, those that believe that the markets are manipulated, that that's just nonsense. And when he made the, when he originally made that statement, that was the same day that the UBS, the former UBS trader, was being convicted of manipulating the gold market. Regarding manipulation, all markets are manipulated. Correct. Anything that is free market is manipulated. If you want your kid to eat dinner and it's a broccoli, you need to manipulate him to eat it. <laughs> Everything in the world is manipulated. It's not even a question if the gold market is manipulated. It's manipulated on the short term. On, in the long term, under this system, Rory, under the fiat monetary system, under the fractional reserve system that we are living on since 1971, what determines the price, the nominal price of gold, is real interest rate and investment demand. So let me explain real quick. Real interest rates is the either the five year or the ten year. Each person, you know, each institution uh, uses uh, uh, one of the above: the Treasury yield minus the CPI or the, the core inflation. If that is negative. That is favorable for gold prices because as an alternative cash, it is better than real cash, than you know, digital fiat funny money cash. Um, so that's one thing. And right now, it is that way. But when inflation goes higher, it will be even more favorable. Two, always assume that in a stock market correction, the, or, or a crash, the market discounts, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the market factors in a recession. And that's also very favorable for gold prices because that um, um, factoring is because all the institutions believe that the central banks will ease monetary policy again. So as you see, the stock market cr crashes or goes down 30 to 40 percent, which will probably happen in the next four to six quarters, you'll see institutions saying, hey, the Fed is going to ease again. The ECB is going to ease again. And that will be very favorable for gold prices. So not only are you going to see higher inflation, you're going to see stock market crashing. And that's also going to be very favorable for gold. Last thing is technically the US dollar is in a bear market right yes. now. And it's probably going to last for at least two to four years. That's very important for gold. Lastly, investment demand. As you know, gold is a unique element in nature because all of the gold that has ever been produced, unless it's been consumed for these tiny particles as, as, a, con, uh, you know, as a conductor of electricity, which it, it most um, gold does not, it is above ground. So there's no shortage in gold. But if you don't want to sell your gold, then there's a perceived shortage in gold. And that creates investment demand, and that creates a higher bid for the price. And that happens when there's a fear about stability of politics, because uh, fiat currencies are, you know, uh, they're attached to politics. You know, right. Venezuela is not a stable country. That's why they have hyperinflation. The U.S. is the world's most stable country at this point, and that's why the dollar 
even if you print trillions of it, it it somehow maintains this uh, weird value, right? This is politic, uh, political money. Money used to be commodity based. Now it's political based, and the future is mathematically based with the cryptocurrencies. Um, and so, what what you're seeing right now is a very favorable time for gold. And it's important to understand that between 2011 and 2016, for the nominal price of gold, it wasn't favorable. You you should have bought it as a as an insurance, but not as a speculative opportunity because there was a lot of things going against it as a nominal price. Um, and, and you need these nominal prices in, in dollars because those create the margins for the miners. If the miners have an all-in cost of, of 1100 or 1200 and the nominal price of gold is 1500 they're making 20% margins, which is insane, or 25% margins, which is a lot. You know, Consider that Coca-Cola makes about a 10% margin. So these companies are very, very, very profitable when gold prices are above 14, 1500, and therefore, with regards to his timeline, um, I, I, I don't like to put timelines on on commodities. These are it's out of our control. What I see right now is that zinc is a 10 year highs. Copper is popping to decade highs as well. Decade highs as well. The next um, uh, metal that I want to see trading higher is silver, and then I want to see gold trading higher as well. That will start a commodities bull market, and gold and silver gains are very, very lucrative in these times. With regards to emerging markets, Russia and, and uh, Brazil, their stock markets are very much booming, and that's important for commodities. China is looking very strong right now. Again, you know they have amazing problems, but with regards to their middle class, it is absolutely booming. India looks amazing right now. It's absolutely booming. Their demographics are very, very young as compared to the Western world. So, you know, just realize the U.S. is nothing with regards to population. There are a lot uh, in terms of consumption, but not a lot in terms of population. If you see the populations of India and China getting richer, that's where the real consumption is going to be at in about 10 to 20 years. And and investors are looking 10 to 20 years ahead with regards to commodity prices and you know it takes time to build mines etc so um look for the for this commodity super cycle to begin like it was between 2001 and 2008 and you'll see amazing gains with gold shares but it's not the time yet the speculative money right now rory it's in blockchain and cryptocurrencies okay. and it's going to be in, in the next three quarters to one year, it's going to be in cannabis. And okay. the reason is we're pre-legalization right now. Now, if you still have a prejudice regarding cannabis, I urge you to research this. The amount yes. of case studies and benefits is so overwhelming. If you think that cannabis uh, consumption for recreational activities leads to the use of harder drugs, etc., that can be said about anything. You should ban cheeseburgers if you think that people <laughs> are are not responsible enough to uh, uh, you know to consume uh, d the right dosage of of uh, um, you know, of anything. Well, it all of those that, that, that whole ridiculous. that whole stepping stone theory is exactly that. It's just a theory, the stepping stone theory. It's, it's not even a theory. It's it's, it's, it's just a government. Nonsense. It's, it's a it's it's a government issued, right? Uh, it, it backed, manipulated um, uh, by right. the tobacco companies. Right. That they started in the '30s when they made it illegal. The Constitution is, is written on hemp. Anyways, right. what I it, it's it's true. What I er, George Washington had hemp fields um, for a living. Yes. Um, what I urge you to do is take a look at what's going on right now on the medicinal front and on the recreational front. July 1st, 2018, Canada will be fully legalized. Yep. January 1st, 2018, California, the queen, the, the mother of all cannabis consumption um, states will be legal. 250 million people flock every year to California as tourists. 39, people, 39 million people live there. Canada 
is going to be the second country in the world to fully legalize. And they're probably going to have enough time ahead of other countries. There are 29 other countries that are looking to legalize right now, including Germany, the world's uh, the, the, the richest country in Europe. They're probably Canada is going to even export cannabis. They're going to be a leader. Wealth Research Group uh, right now identified the number one cannabis company in Canada as we see it. And Rory, you can go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash profit um, to look at our research. The company is called Invictus MD. We absolutely feel that this company has an amazing, amazing potential to become a huge um, dominator in Canada. They're, they are they own the largest land package, and that is probably one of the most important things because there's only 64 licenses nationwide. They own two of them, and they can expand their cultivation facilities. Anyways, it's you know let's not go into the details, but if you go into uh, wealthreachgroup.com forward slash profit, you'll see my four months worth of research on this company, um, and you can take a look. Anyways, I think that I think that you're absolutely correct as far as what's happening with the cannabis industry, that it will. I, I personally and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because you're the one doing the research. But just outside looking in, it, it, it appears that the cannabis industry has the potential to be one of the real wealth drivers for the next year to 10 years because of the demand, the lack of infrastructure that exists today, and the build-out that is going to be required, not just in dispensaries or in distribution, but as far as cultivation and research and development, all of these huge investment opportunities that exist within that single industry. And look at what it's already done to economies like the state of Colorado, state of Washington, all of these other uh, individual states within the U.S. that have either legalized the medicinal aspects or legalized the recreational and medicinal, which is Washington State and Colorado. Colorado, I believe, was the first. And their, their economy has exploded because of their legalization of cannabis and what it's done for the entire state, not just a couple of areas, but the whole state has benefited from this change. Or am I way off base here? You're, you're, look, this is the end of prohibition. It's right. a singular event. It's yes. not a cyclical bull market. It's not a regular scenario. It's the end of prohibition. It's the move of billions of dollars of demand from the illegal market into the legal market, into the hands of shareholders of companies that will be first. There is no brand names. There is no dominator. There's nothing. It's the wild, wild west right now. And if you can partner with the right companies, look, the marijuana index in 2014 saw 20 companies, which was half the index, go up a thousand percent in wow. one year. And the, it, right now, with regards to Canada, you're going to see wave number two. The reason is they're going to fully legalize by G by July first, twenty eighteen. Right, and that's already on the uh, books, isn't it? I mean, they're, oh, yeah. they're just we're just at this point we're just waiting on July first to arrive because the law's already been passed. Right? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, <clears throat> anything is possible in politics, but yes. <laughs> uh, 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 as it looks right now, it will be fully legalized. And, um, you know, they know the importance of being the, only, the, the second country in the world to be fully legalized. And they're on the border of the United States, which means that once the United States federally legalizes it, and they will. I yes. mean, don't, I don't get it wrong. Don't get it mistaken. Once California is legal, fully legal, 
I mean, this will be the example and, and the doorway for how to regulate, how to, you know, you know how, how to do everything. This will be the model um, for, for the federal uh, government to, to start looking at this from a 21st century perspective and not um, a 20th century perspective. Um, with regards to cannabis, just understand it's in hyper growth mode. It's, um, it, it, it's a guaranteed demand that is already... Uh, dwarfing alcohol and tobacco with regards to, you know, if you look at the illegal market, and right. now all of that demand is going to spill over into the legal market, which is great because you're going to see quality control, you're going to see more research, you're going to see uh, regulation, you're going to see monitoring, you're going to see education on, on the doses, how much to take, you're going to see so much benefit from this becoming legal. I'm not even talking about the tax benefits for the states and the countries, and these jobs are unsourceable. You can't outsource agriculture uh, of cannabis to other countries. This is a great source of new jobs for the United States and for every other country that is struggling with its job market right now because uh, you know labor is, is being outsourced to 45 countries that are now cheaper to um, produce products at than China. There's 45 countries that are cheaper than China. Wow. So it, it, it's a new world. Now, I want to just uh, go back and, and say this. With regards to people who are facing retirement and have insufficient savings, I think the number one most important thing to understand is investments should not be your primary source of income. If you live and die by your investments, that is a very, very stressful environment. I think all retirees who do not have sufficient savings should freelance. They should go to Upwork.com, Upwork.com. I have zero interest in, in, in if you do this or not. It's, a, it's the largest freelance website in the world, and you should see what your skills are worth. There are so many home-based um, gigs and work that you can do there for as up to 50 and $60 per hour. And I think that if you do that, you'll find a, a better retirement with more meaningful work. And on top of that, you might even be able to relocate to a cheaper country, a much cheaper country to retire at than the United States, and still make that income because this is online income. Right. Um, which is important for retirees to understand that they, they, they are not a plant. They, nobody put them in the ground. They, they can move to another country. There's so many opportunities, um, with, even without a second passport. But the, the U.S. residents are welcome in, in many places because they bring quality. They bring money with them, etc. They can develop um, businesses and enterprise in, 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 in countries that they, that they go to. Um, this is the, my second um, you know, uh, suggestion to retirees. So either relocate, keep, your pr keep a primary source of income with freelance work, and then look at, at, uh, at income you can generate from investments. It's very important to understand that you should not make investments your primary source of income if you do not have sufficient savings. It's not healthy, and it rarely works, honestly. Um, uh I'm not, that's one of the areas that I'm not concerned with because of the work that I do. I mean, having the daily coin, that's already built in. I will, I will do that until they put me in the ground. And that, uh, that's the bottom line. And, and it will continue to generate some type of income, regardless of how big or how small it is, it will always produce an income. And that's, and I'm very grateful for that. So, you know, with with any luck and, and some more hard work on my part, it'll generate more income as the years go by instead of less. But either way, the goal is to get my, because I'm 55, you're 33, I'm 55. So when you're talking about these retirement uh, plans and goals and all, of these are, I'm paying very close attention, Lior, because they are, they all apply to me, period. And you know, when I'm looking at different types of investment vehicles as far as 
what's going to be beneficial to to me and my family, the junior gold mine sector, the cannabis, uh, what's happening with the cannabis industry. These are these are very exciting to me because with small uh, moves in, as far as small investments can become very large investments in a very short period of time in both of those sectors, in my opinion. And according to what you're laying out, that's the potential is there. It's all there, right? It, it, yes, it, it is. And, and it's really important to conduct the diligence before you commit uh, your funds to anyone, to any company. Um, and, and that is the core of what we do with Wealth Research Group. We spend so much time researching um, and sifting through these hundreds of little companies to find the ones that have management teams that have done it before and are highly respectable. And we meet with them and, and we really become um, a part of uh, a more sophisticated group of investors with, uh, with this. And I share the research because this is what I love doing. This is my, my vehicle of sharing my, my opinions and not only on, on, uh, on stocks, we, Wealth Research Group newsletter, it covers um, so much more uh, than just, just that. It covers the big picture. It covers um, other suggestions, my own experiences, what's going on with, uh, with things that matter. Uh, look, uh, it, bottom line, it's very important right now for people to stay engaged and stay committed to their goals because the system that we live under favors the rich. A debt-based system favors the rich uh, at the expense of the middle class and lower income uh, and lower income classes. And therefore, it's very hard, even with hard work, to get out of the cycle. And it's, it's extremely important to educate yourself because with education and knowledge, you have the tools to change around in uh, your 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 world, your circumstances, etc. That is the uh, um, the bottom line here. Education. Stay engaged. Stay engaged. Stay informed. Stay on top of your individual world, because that's where you live. And if you're not in charge of your world, someone will be more than happy to manage it for you. And that just does not sound like a very good plan to me. So. But Lior, we've been we've been speaking with uh, Lior Gantz, and you can find all of Lior's great work and all the reports. And I'll put a link to everything in the in the description below. But you can find it all over at wealthresearchgroup.com. Lior, thank you for all your time today. This has been great, and I look forward to speaking with you in the future. Thanks, Rory. Thanks very much.